Well, here's our new cell for our forklift battery. We had to drive up to Alpine to pick it up from McCoy's because they didn't want to bring it all the way down to us. So, interestingly, the company that actually delivered it comes out here anyway, but the it's called Rack Transport. They're um, not great, <laughs> but everybody I've talked to has their complaints about them. My biggest complaint is they don't want to come down here, so they keep telling us, oh, we have problems with our trucks, our trucks are broke down, blah, 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 the lift gate doesn't work, can't open the back, instead of just saying, we only want to make one trip down there this month. So, yeah, anyway, so we've got it here. There's a little uh, bit of acid apparently leaked out through the top, so hopefully it's just the cap that's that's uh, not seated well or something. Not a crack. Find out shortly though. All right, so I've got the cell in here and the jar, which is that plastic uh, case around it, that they just called a jar, um, is good. There's no cracks in the, in the top or anything, so it must have just spilled out through the, through the cap a little bit. Um, anyway, so next thing I need to do is get these uh, interconnects cut off of here, that's these pieces right here. Um, you take those off and then I've got new ones right here. And they sent me two huge sticks of lead to melt into there, so I'll probably only need about half of one of those. <laughs> anyway, um, and luckily our uh, inverters are capable of running uh, batteryless. So once I disconnect the, well basically I'll shut, it, I'll shut everything down. I'll uh, flip the breaker so the battery is disconnected from the system and then I will turn on one of these two because you can only run one at a time. They don't run paralleled without the battery. Um, and I'll probably turn off some of the stuff like the RV and the, and the casita out there because they don't need power. Um, not for the few minutes while I'm working on this stuff. Anyway, but that way I'll still have light in here, so that'll be good. And as long as the sun stays out, I'll uh, I'll be able to have light. I'll keep my headlight just in case it goes behind a cloud and it doesn't even make enough to run the lights, but I don't think that's going to happen. All right, I'm going to get this cell put in and then and then get to work on this. So the cell is in now. I just did that because I didn't want the uh, lead bits falling down to the bottom of the thing where it'd be hard to hard to clean them up. I figure eh, if if a couple little bits fall down the cracks there, it'll be fine. We're gonna have the vacuum in here and yeah, you know, whatever. So we haven't quite hit float yet. We've had the AC running inside the inside the RV all day, and that thing gobbles up power like crazy. But. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut off hmm, shut off the solar going into the uh, into that one. So it should realize it pretty soon here. I mean it says no amps, but it's still showing. Maybe it just shows solar because one of the units in the, in the, uh, whatever, <laughs> group is still got solar coming in. So, now let's try shutting this guy off. Okay, so now all the load is on this one. So we should be able to disconnect this guy from the battery. Oh, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> it didn't like that at all. Okay, well, I'm not sure what happened there, but I went ahead and shut off everything. So now I'm going to flip back on the solar going to this unit. 
and looks like it's yep there we go so I've got the breaker turned off there and there so the battery is not connected in fact you can see the little icon there shows no battery and it's complaining that there's no battery but it's running the lights and it's running the AC and in fact it's running some other stuff inside I'm gonna shut this one off that's going into the tiny house over there that's the RV uh, yeah we'll keep the rest of this stuff on alright so next thing I need to do is remove my little temporary jumper from here to here and at this point the batteries well I should just flip this one for fun but there now the battery is completely disconnected and uh, I'm going to going to disconnect that I'm gonna center punch on the top of both of these and then we've got this tool here which it basically just sits on top of on top of here and drills down and it makes well you'll see in a second behind the cloud. Oh. All right, so I got the uh, old pieces off of here. End up using a screwdriver to chisel some of them off. Um, but we're ready to ready to weld these together now. So, first thing I'm going to do is take these caps off <clears throat> so that the any hydrogen that might have built up in here can breathe by where I'm going to have my flame at. And I don't have a air compressor in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and blow some oxygen down into down into it.
yeah, there it goes. Oh, there's that drill bit I broke off in there. That one turned out good. How the hell are these things are supposed to come out of there? I think they're just supposed to pop out. Now we can water our battery again. Yeah. 
All right, well, my first time using an acetylene torch on, uh, on lead. These ones turned out all right. You can see I had a little too much. Uh, I got too close, I think, on that one, and it started to smoke a little. That's what that black's from, but that doesn't matter. And unfortunately, <laughs> I did the uh, one thing that I was told to make sure I don't do, and that is get too close to the edge of the the um, interconnect here, this, this little metal bar. It's got that loop around it, and I melted the edge of the interconnect off. But still making contact all the way around. And of course, this part right here is the most crucial because that's where the current's gonna be carried. And, you know, we're only at most gonna be drawing about 100 amps off this thing. So, um, 100, 150 amps, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it'll, it'll easily handle that. <laughs> so, battery to this unit. Oh, I have the switch turned off. <laughs> Let it come up here. All right. And then battery to this unit. And now we should be running fully off battery. And as soon as the inverter initializes, we'll have light again. There it goes. And then we can flip on our solar panels and there we go and now we're charging and we should be pretty close to full because we were floating when I turned these off eh, 51.6 volts so oh and I'll need to reprogram this now for 24 cells Hmm. All right, then. All right, so we're up and running. Both inverters are getting solar power and charging the batteries. Battery. And, uh, yeah, everything's going right. It's about 6 o'clock right now, so we don't have a whole lot of power generation time left. So we probably won't get the battery up to float today. It's pretty close, though. I mean, we've got a few volts to go. Um, anyway, and then my next project is to hook this, uh, or put all these, uh, breakers and shunts into this box and, uh, you know, kind of dress this up so it's not quite as ugly. Um, and then finish wiring up this third inverter and running all the solar wires through the, you know, through the conduit that's over there rather than just draping them across here. But... At least everything's working good, and we're back to back to where we should be. All right, and then our battery company wanted me to go ahead and dissect this cell to uh, figure out what went wrong with it. So I'm going to cut it open and send them some pictures. So I guess join us next time for the dissection of this cell. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye.